Welcome to this new video of my YouTube series Getting Started with Eclipse MicroProfile 3.0. In this video I'm gonna cover the JSON-P specification. To not get confused with the previous JSON-P specification which was all about JSON binding, so to bind Java objects to JSON strings and to bind JSON strings back again to Java objects, this JSON P specification is all about processing JSON data structures. So with JSONP you can create JSON objects on the fly using a convenient builder mechanism. So here I've provided you an example where I've created a nested JSON data structure and I'm using this object builder. So with this object builder we can add any JSON attribute we want and pass in either a, a value or a nested object or also a JSON array. So the same is true for JSON arrays. We can also use the create array builder method and build a JSON array of our choice with either just strings or a set of JSON objects or a mix mixture of both. This is all possible. To show you how it looks like if we printed this JSON object. Let's print out the first one, which is the nested one. And here you see a, a typical JSON you might get from a remote API. So with JSON P, we can now process this JSON data further. So one thing we can do, we can pretty print it. To pretty print it, we can make use of this JSON writer factory and configure it and for this configuration I'm saying I want pretty printing and then I will use this writer factory to create a JSON writer which will then write our JSON to our destinated output which is in this example a string writer and here I'm printing out the result of this string writer and let's see how it looks like. So this should now print our previous JSON data structure but in a formatted way. And here you'll now see it in the console, so it pretty prints the JSON. Another thing you can do with this JSON writer factory, you can write to any output stream you want. One good example might be to write to a file. So I've provided here an example where we write a pretty printed JSON string to a file. So again, I'm using this JSON writer factory and in this example not use a string writer but a file output stream and specify the path of the file and then just write it to it. Let's execute the method and see the output. So we're not expecting anything on the console but once our code executes we should see a JSON file within the file system. So the output is here from our previous print line and here I'm inside the Docker container as I'm deploying in the background to an open Liberty container and I'm already in the temp folder and let's see for the output and as you can see here there is a output.json and we can have a look at the content of this file and here you see our JSON data structure saved in a local JSON file. So this is also possible with JSONP. Alongside writing JSON data structures you can also read JSON data structures for example from a string and use the JSON reader for it. Here I'm giving you an example how you can read a, a JSON string and parse it to a JSON object data class. Let's uncomment this and wait for the output and as you can see here we use this string and now get a JSON object. You can also write a read from a file. So I've prepared a books.json file on the cloud path and if we now uncomment this method we should see the content of the file which I showed you. And here on the console I printed it and this is an array of two books. And this is also possible with JSONP, so you can read from different sources. Most convenient one would be a string or a file. If you have to process or so either path or generate 
bigger JSON data structures, you can use the streaming mechanism of JSONP. So if you have a use case where the JSON object might not fit into memory, for example, or you want to parse it in a more granular way, you can use it. In this example here, I've provided you a code snippet, how it works if you want to parse a JSON string. So first we need our JSON string, which is in this example a rather small one. And then we can create a JSON parser instance and parse it. And while parsing it, we get access to every content of the JSON string. And this gives us access to once our array starts. So for example, here our skills attribute field is a array of JSON of strings. So we we'll can we get notified here or can intercept this if we want. And there's a list of events you can get access to if you want to parse bigger JSON strings. So in this example, I'm just printing out once I'm here in a dedicated event. So with this parsing mechanism, we now see here how our JSON string is actually parsed and have access to it. This streaming API is not limited to parsing JSON data structures. You can also generate JSON data structures with it and can make use of this JSON generator to write or create your JSON objects or arrays in a more streaming fashion. Let's see the output. So this is for creating bigger JSON strings for a smaller one. I would prefer to use the the example I showed you in the beginning with the more convenient methods. But you can also use this generator here and I'm creating a rather simple array here, which just contains two objects, with one with the name Duke and the other one with the name Jakarta. So this is also possible with JSONP. With the latest version of JSONP, you can also modify your JSON data structures with the JSON pointer, JSON patch, or JSON merge patch, which are all specified in a formal RFC and part of the specification. The first method I want to show you is the JSON pointer. So imagine you have a bigger JSON object with a lot of nested object and you want to access a nested object directly and don't want to use getters over and over and check for null values, for example. For this value, you uh, for this use case, you can use this JSON pointer and create it with this static method here and then define a expression which value you want to access. So in this example, I'm saying I want the first skill on the root level. So here I'm referring to the first element of this array. You can also specify single values here like age. What's also possible is to then work with this JSON pointer. So the JSON pointer just points to a place in your JSON object. Once you have the pointer, you can either say, give me the value. You can also say, remove the value at this place, replace it with a different JSON value, check if it's actually present or also at one if it's not present. So let's take a look at them. So I've used five examples here. One to get the actual value here. So I'm printing out the first element of the array here. Then I'm using it to remove the age, which is 42. So in the second place, in the second print statement here, you don't see any age anymore. The next one is I want to replace the name, which is Duke here with John, which you see here. So the name is not Duke anymore, but John in this case. The fourth example checks for if there is an address field. So as we don't specify an address field here, it should return false as you see it here. And the last one is I create a pointer to the text attribute, which is also not present here, but I can say, please add a new array here, 
with the value nice. So this is also possible with this JSON pointer. Quite similar to the JSON pointer um, is the JSON patch. So with the patch, you can specify a set of modification operations for your JSON data structure, which are then used to modify your JSON data structure. So here again, I'm using a predefined JSON object and create a JSON patch instance and define my modification operations. So here I'm saying my modification will contain adding a new field on the root level, which is named is retired. I will add a new skills to my skills array. I will remove the H and also replace the name Duke with Duke2. Once I defined all my modification operations, I have to build this JSON patch object and then apply it. So I will use this patch and say apply and apply it on my JSON object, which is defined here. So it's quite similar to the JSON pointer, but here you rather specify a set of modifications and then apply it once to the object, whereas the JSON pointer is more like doing it in a manual fashion and one after the other. So let's have a look at the output of my modification operations. So the JSON should now look quite different. And here I'm printing out the patch JSON, so the, the name has changed. We got a new skill. The H was removed as defined here and also a new field was added is retired. The last JSON modification operation we have access to with the JSONP specification is the JSON merge patch. So with the merge patch we can merge and in parallel patch two JSON data structures into one. So here I'm creating two JSON data structures. One our simple JSON data structure we used for the other examples and then I'm creating a merge JSON object which contains some values which are already present in the original JSON data structure but also more like this is employee and this skills array looks different and we can then use this merge JSON object and create a merge patch out of this merge and apply this merge patch on our original JSON object and get as a result our merge JSON. So let's have a look at how this looks in action. So here we will now get the result of the merge. So the name was overwritten by this Duke2. The H is still existing as we don't override it and while merging it stays the same. The skills are then overwritten by our merge patch and also this is employee which we added here in our merge patch is now added to our new JSON data structure. So if you are looking for further input for these JSON modification operations, which might be really helpful if you have to modify or find values in bigger JSON data structures, take a look at the JSONP specification or also if, uh, at the official RFC documents where all of these is explained in detail. That's all I wanted to share with you for the JSONP specification. Have fun using it. Thank you.